Good morning, Booktube, YouTube. <clears throat> this is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video since I'm all by myself this morning here in West Michigan. My wife left this morning to have breakfast with some of her cousins. And I'm sitting here in the dining room. I'm not down the lower level. I'm not in my main study. This is where I primarily sit when I'm reading or writing. It's either down, when I'm down the lower level, I'd spend most of my time here at the dining room table or in my reading chair in the living room. I have a main study. You've seen that videos. But I like the dining room table because I can put, spread things out. My diary, I've been writing in my diary this morning. I'm on page 1052 for the year 2021. Yeah, writing in my October. I've seen, I, I, I noticed I haven't been showing in my recent videos that I'm a diarist. I keep a diary. I have since I was in high school in the late 60s. This is October. We're already coming to the middle of the month. As you know, when we get into this, the middle of the month, I go to the second folder. The first folder is from October the 1st to October the, the 15th. And then the second folder will be from October the 16th until the 31st, which is Halloween or which I call Satan's Holy Day. Halloween, I don't believe in Halloween, Hallows the Eve. Uh, as you all know, I believe in demons, I believe in Satan, I believe in witches, I believe that there are demonic spirits and that their Holy Day is what we call in America, Halloween. I don't. Uh, I don't think that we should make light of satanic things like witches and demons. And to me, I see people watching horror films all the month of October. But to me, when I think of horror, what would it be like to be damned in hell forever? That to me is true horror. To be damned forever with the fallen angels, demons, and Satan. That is going to be Halloween. <laughs> that will not be a time of eating candy and uh, popping mushrooms, uh, marshmallows into your mouth. Uh, so, no, I don't believe in Hallow's Eve or I don't, I don't observe Satan's holiday. So yeah, the second uh, second folder goes from the 16th to the 31st of October. So I've been writing in my diary. Uh, it's 9.37 in the morning here on September the 14th. And I, I got out, I haven't been reading this uh, last couple weeks. I took a, a break. But this is Ludolf of Saxony, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 1, Volume 2, Chapters 41 to 92, by, translated by Melton T. Walsh. Uh, as I've shown you that I read this one already. This is The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 1, Volume 1, Chapters 1 through 40. I read this one which is over 700 pages and then I wanted to I'm almost finished with this one which is which is around 830 pages and then I want to start reading this one part 2 volume 1 chapters 1 through 57 by Ludolf of Saxony uh, and then volume four, the final volume, comes out in December. So then I will have the whole complete work. Very famous medieval devotional work, The Life of Jesus Christ. This is the first time it's been translated into English. And I've been reading it for my devotions the last, I don't know how long. i also been reading uh, other books which I didn't bring. Oh yeah, I've been reading 
The Abuse of God, The Abuse of God's Grace by Nicholas Kledlet. And then I haven't really started this yet. Against the Darkness, The Doctrine of Angels, Satan, and Demons by Graham A. Cole. This is a good book to read on October if you're going to observe, if you believe, well, that you make light of or you think are not real Satan and demons and witches and warlocks and horror. <laughs> read this. Now this morning, I, I don't really, I, I was going to show, uh, show you some used books I got at thrift stores yesterday. Yesterday I went out to Upper Makatawa Natural Area and took a hike. And then on the way home I stopped at Goodwill and Action House and found some books. But um, I'll do that another time. I'm just going to just ramble here this morning. There's no really rhyme or reason to this video. but. I've, I've said in my videos that I'm a collector of books. I don't read everything that I collect or that I get at the stores. And that I have, uh, I purged my library this summer. And now that I just collect books by authors that I did not purge out of my library. And I do since I'm into art and history and literary criticism and literary studies and biographies and memoirs and letters and short stories and essays, I do, if I see something interesting like that, I will buy it if it's, you know, 50 cents a quarter, a dollar. But yesterday, my wife, um, she went to visit her sister-in-law who's a widow, three years ago, Carol's older brother died, and my wife is close to my sister-in-law, and she went out there and visited, and then she took a cake. Yesterday was her younger brother's birthday, so Carol surprised him at his office with a birthday cake, and then she says she had a stop on the way home to Ditto's thrift store and she bought me two books and that's the whole basis of this video is to show you the two books, <laughs> used books that my wife got for me and to show you the collections that these go with. The first book my wife bought me for a dollar, you see a dollar on here, is Let Nothing Trouble You, St. Teresa of Avila. And this is a, a the series called Saints Speak Today. And what this is, is Let Nothing Trouble You, 60 re Reflections from the Writings of St. Teresa of Avila, complied, compiled by Heidi S. Hess. Now, my wife knows that I read St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. St. John of the Cross was a spiritual director to the Carmelite uh, uh, nun, you might call her, of uh, Teresa of Avila back there in, I think it was in the 17th or 16th century, Spain. But what this is, is reflections. And in the back, the, 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 the woman who compiled this has in the back where she got, what she quotes. She quotes, for example, from St. Teresa of Avila's The Interior Castle. And I have a, a paperback edition of this. I've had it since I was, I think I got this. So, I don't know, this came out in 1961. I think I got this in 1970 there in San Pablo, California, in the Bay Area. I've had this forever. And recently I found this at a thrift store, The Life of St. Teresa of Avila by her, herself. She uh, wrote her own like autobiography about her spiritual life. And so the point is, this is a little thing. You, 60 days, you read Reflections, and she quotes from the writings of St. Teresa of Avila. And these are the writings. I have her writings in my library. 
This is the collected works of St. Teresa of Avila. And this is volume one. And you have in here her, uh, her, the book of her life, which this is based on. Uh, spiritual testimonies and sequelices. And then you have in volume two, the collected works of St. Teresa of Avila, The Way of Perfection, The Interior Castle, which I just showed you, The Interior Castle. And I've been reading this. I got these several years ago. I, I took a course on spiritual direction which I did not complete, which I've gone into reason why I stopped taking those classes with the Dominican sisters here in this area. But uh, I bought these at that time. I already had the works of St. John of the Cross. This is a, volume three is the foundations of her, her, the book of her foundations, minor works, constitutions on making the visitation, response to spiritual challenge, poetry. So, so the point is, I do collect the writings of Saint Teresa of Avila, and uh, so when my wife got me this little book, I, I was. I, I keep it on my desk now as when I read it in the mornings. When I wake up, I look at it and read it. Uh, like for example, for reflection, Lord, what an awesome privilege it is to come into your presence. You know, that is true. It always amazes me that every morning, my wife and I, we can wake up and, you know, we have our breakfast and we have devotions that we can come into the presence of God that we can fellowship with God and we can commune with God because of the work of Christ. Because He died on the cross for our sins. He reconciled us to God. He paid the price. He suffered. He shed blood that we might have our forgiveness of sins. That we might be declared righteous and justified in God's holy sight. And that we now with boldness because of God's grace, of God's mercy and love, lavish upon us in Christ, that we can come into the presence of the living and holy God and know him as our heavenly father and that we can spirit, that we have been adopted into the family of God that we are now sons and daughters of the most high God so you know things like that I haven't read this morning uh, that was day three uh, like he says she says by uh, day five Reflection, even though we do not hear, even though we do not hear him, he speaks well to the heart. When we beseech him from the heart, nor is there any need to shout. However softly we speak, he is near enough to hear us. That's a blessing that this mighty sovereign God who rules the heavens and the earth, all of the cosmos, that we can come into his presence and he hears us. He listens to our prayers. Not only our prayers, but he knows the groanings of our spirit. Things like that. So anyway, my wife also got me this book at Ditto's. She bought me two books. This one, Let Nothing Trouble You, St. Teresa of Avila. And then she got this book, This Boy's Life, a Memoir. See, my wife knows I like memoirs. And this is by Tobias Wolf. This is a memoir. And I told her when she got home, I already had it. I had it in hardback because as you, as I said I collect memoirs and this is uh, his memoir of growing up but I also collect his writings and I have Tobias Wolf uh, this is his stories the night in question I have the stories of Tobias Wolf and this is his Memories of the Lost War in Pharaoh's Army by Tobias Wolf. This is when his, he writes about his experience fighting in the Vietnam conflict. In Pharaoh's Army, Memories of a Lost War, Tobias Wolf. 
And then I have his novel, The Old School by Tobias Wolf. And then I have Our Story Begins, Tobias Wolf. New and Selected Stories by Tobias Wolf. So I collect, so once again, this shows I am a book collector. Uh, so now I have two copies of The Boy's Life, This Boy's Life, a memoir by Tobias Wolf. <coughs> so that's all I'm going to show you, that everything I have basically is with other collections. They're not just uh, separate little entities of themselves. They go with other things. So yeah, today is a Thursday. My wife was supposed to cover for somebody from the book at the book nook from three to five today, but she forgot that she's supposed to babysit our granddaughter Josie Joy. So I told her I would do it since I did it last Thursday for this person. I volunteer. I took an extra shift on Thursday from three to five, and I'll do the same thing today. So I'll go to the book nook today, and I'll be reading. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what I'll take with me to read. But this morning I have been, my plan is to read uh, this volume for devotions. Uh, the Life of Jesus Christ, Part 1, Volume 2, Chapters 41 to 92. I am on Chapter 82. So I have about 10 chapters left in this book, and then I can go on to uh, Part 2, Volume 1, and then in December we'll get Volume 4. So I hope you're having a good week. Uh, I'm still feeling okay. I'm thankful. I, I wake up every day saying, this is the Lord, the Lord, this is the day the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice in it. I try to not be negative. Uh, I try to stay in a, a, an attitude and posture of prayer and looking to God for grace to live each day for His glory and to walk in obedience to Him, to live in the light of His Holy Word, the Bible, yeah, you know, I'm reading, I was going to read in there, in that Life of Jesus Christ. It's from John chapter 7. And I think there's a part in there. Uh, he says, He says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks is the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? And the people answered and said, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered and said to them, Didn't, I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that is uh, from Moses, but from the fathers, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so the law of Moses should not be broken. Are you angry with me because I made a man completely whole on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to the appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from, but when Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. And Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me and know where I am from. I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, and whom you do not know. But I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. 
Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the people believed in him, because when the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done. So I'll close with that. And I hope you're all doing well. This is a Thursday, Friday. I'm not sure when I'll do a video again. I got books coming in the mail. Maybe I'll find something at the book nook today. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And until next time, bye.